Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman. It's the holiday season and hopefully you're enjoying time with your family. I thought that we would take a break from reef tanks and talk about poison dart frogs instead. So for poison dart frogs, you really don't need a lot of space. I'm using a 60 gallon cube aquarium. It's two feet on a side by two feet. Um, don't have a lot of vertical plants in it. I just think I should have more, but um, my frogs are okay. So mostly it's just on the ground here. The important parts for poison dart frogs is that they're rainforest critters, and so you need a lot of humidity. In my tank, I'll show you at the top, I have automated misters that come in. So these misting heads, they're very easy to install. Um, the brand that I have is Mist King, but you could really do whatever you want. And you want to keep the humidity up around like 80 or 90% in your tank, um, just because they're amphibians and they'll dry out if you don't have them high. So they do like bromeliads. This is a bromeliad. The, um, this is a Neorigilia bromeliad. And you can see they turn red in the center. Uh, the frogs actually live down in the leaf axles and they'll lay eggs and they will actually breed in your tank. They're very easy animals to breed if you want to do that kind of a thing. The other basic care requirement that they need aside from places to hide is uh, food. And so you might see in this video um, some fruit flies crawling around. Um, you can just, well you not you can, you have to grow your own fruit flies. So this is a fruit fly culture get it in the frame and basically uh, they're genetically mutated fruit flies just like you would grow in a genetics course where they don't fly there's two different kinds of fruit flies the ones that i feed my frogs my frogs are called ranatomia imitator which are a thumbnail poison dart frog you won't see any of them they're great at hiding i'll put pictures throughout the video um, so there are, are two different kinds of of poison dart frog there are Sort of the bigger ones, things like Dendrobates, Tinctoris, the blue poison dart frog, um, uh, Azurius is the blue one, Tinctoris is a different but related species, uh, Leucomelis, the bumblebee poison dart frog. Um, these are much bigger, easier to take care of. They take larger food items, so small crickets, even uh, pinhead crickets. Um, there's larger fruit flies called Hydei, so uh, those are the ones you would feed those frogs. The thumbnail frogs. All of the, the species in the Ranatomia um, genus are going to take these smaller fruit flies, the Melangaster fruit flies. Both of them you can get genetically mutated so they don't fly and um, you'll be able to breed them pretty easily on your own. By far, the fruit flies are the hardest part of poison dart frogs. You don't need to worry too much about heating. Your house is probably good as far as heat goes you'll have to worry much more about humidity. So as I mentioned, I have the misters. If you don't have misters, you'll need to mist once or twice a day. And the heat should just be upper 70s, maybe real low 80s for most species. There are some exceptions. Some frogs from lowland areas obviously will need some warmer temperatures um, and so on, but they're all pretty much in the 75 to 80 degree range. You can get poison dart frogs online, just like you can get uh, coral and fish. The ones that I have are from a company in Canada. They do imports though. Uh, it's called Understory Enterprises and they do a lot of captive breeding for a lot of different species out of Peru. My imitator are from uh, captive bred but the bloodline originally is from Peru and there are hundreds of different variations in, in local things just the same way you can get designer clownfish although um, designer poison dart frogs aren't really a thing it's more if you go from this valley then they're more blue then the next valley over is more green say stuff like that so yeah poison dart frogs take, take a look at them they're really easy to take care of um, as I mentioned before they breed very easily if you want to actually uh, sell the offspring it's something you can do online all the forums have sort of for sale things. Unlike fish, poison dart frogs, if they're healthy and you're taking care of them and feeding them enough, they pretty much are going to be breeding in your tank. And in this bromeliad, I just know because I've seen the eggs, there are some tadpoles. Um, 
but I don't take them out in mine. I just sort of let the, the colony do its own thing in here. Um, so yeah, another interesting thing, if you like reef tanks, you might be interested in poison dart frogs because you can really do a lot of um, planted tank kind of stuff. Um, I have uh, these two bromeliads. I have this large one in the middle of the tank, um, but also a smaller one down here that the frogs sometimes use. But then the rest of the plants are all miniature orchids um, and nothing is flowering right now, but uh, they do flower in my tank and it's uh, always nice to see flowers. So something to consider as well. A lot of miniature orchids take the same sort of humidity and temperature requirements as a poison dart frog. So yeah, I thought it would be interesting to show you another hobby of mine. A lot of people who have poison dart frogs also have reef tanks for whatever reason. So I don't know how much it goes in the other direction, but um, yeah, thought it would be interesting. So if you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, for a relaxing time, make it Centauri time.